All right, thanks for joining me for this segment of what's your attachment style and why does it matter? We are going to talk about the attachment style that is avoidant and fearful. And in the last video, I talked about avoidant dismissive. It's there's some similarities between these two. So if you miss it, you might want to go check it out. But basically, both are what I would consider, you know, in a relationship, like the runner. And if you were in a runner chaser dynamic, this would be like a runner. Okay. Uh, this is somebody who's generally got this guarded attitude. Um, they might be socially avoidant. Um, they could have some deep rooted fears of intimacy deep. But the thing is, they're not really good at suppressing their feelings like the avoidant dismissive. Okay. They have definitely a negative view of themselves um, and others. Whereas I think the avoidant dismissive has more of a positive view on themselves than others. Might not be that great actually, which puts other people farther down the totem pole. <laughs> but the avoidant fearful attachment style, it's just all around negative, okay? Um, they have low self-esteem, they are afraid of abandonment, and they both seek and avoid closeness. So you might be hearing in what I'm saying a lot of contradictions. Like I wanna be close, I don't wanna be close. Uh, some would call this a disorganized style because you know they both desire and have fear of intimacy all at the same time. And this is probably the most dependent of all styles. Now, some people call it disorganized because this person can just disassociate or become highly defensive under stress, and they can act very unpredictably, especially if they're overcome with emotions, they can become extremely volatile. This type of person has come from a childhood where they don't feel secure. They didn't feel secure with their parents uh, because of the inconsistency and probably outright abuse. Now, like I said earlier with the avoidant dismissive, there might have been slight abuse, very critical type of, right? It, 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 it takes on more of a serious tone with this particular style where there's definitely a fear-based parent-child relationship. The interactions are fear-based. The parent might even use the child to in some way work through their unresolved attachment traumas. In some way, the parent can both cause fear in the child and also comfort. So this child often grows up to get into toxic relationships where they become abusive and aggressive themselves. And they can also become very insensitive and untrusting themselves because of these unresolved past traumas that follow this person well into adulthood. And it makes it really difficult for them. Some of them just outright unable to accept closeness and to regulate their own emotions. Right, depending on the severity, right, it could get quite serious. Now, in adulthood, it's like similar to the avoidant dismissive style, they can under communicate. They have, you know, few words that they express, they've got a lot of emotional depth and range that is expressed. They like to keep things factual, surfacey, light and fluffy, very on the future, very talking about others and things, and let's not talk about me, you know or not anything too personal about me or too vulnerable about me, right? That type of person. Um, that's what they have in common with the avoidant dismissive. Also, they have an attachment system that is shut down and they basically can be cut off from their own emotions and they have fears of getting too close to others. So, um, like I said in the last video, it's the same thing where they're confusing someone standing up for themselves as rudeness or a partner seeking out fair intimacy is perceived as having their boundaries crossed in some way, they too can let things go, even if they're bothered by it or it's hurtful. But what is different between this attachment style and the avoidant dismissive is that they can also be socially avoided. This is not just on an interpersonal level, but on a societal level, like antisocial, okay? Uh, where they strongly fear connection and rejection. This could be someone who demonstrates narcissistic, antisocial behaviors. They have a lack of empathy, a lack of remorse, and in very extreme cases, they might engage in drug abuse, criminal activity. This type of person tends to experience depression, 
post-traumatic stress disorder, right, PTSD, they can have high anxiety levels, and sometimes they can engage in self-harming or outright abusive behavior towards others. When they try to communicate, it can come across quite incoherent or hard for other people to follow. Like there's not an easy back and forth flow in the communications. Sometimes they can't find their words or they struggle to get their point across. And if they're very overwhelmed by emotions, there's just shutdown or like a loss of words. They just, it's almost like they've got the words knocked out of them, okay? Um, I've had those moments. I'm not going to lie to you. I mean, I have had those moments where I'm just like... <laughs> out of tears, out of words, you know, all cried out. <laughs> um, so yeah, there's, there's an extreme element to this, okay? But at the same time, like I said from the very beginning of this series, um, you, you might not fit neatly in one of these categories. You may find, as I do, that you got a little bit of, you know what I'm saying? And you start, as you get more familiar, you start honing in on, yeah, I do that. What do I do that? Where's that coming from? And working on that, okay? But as I said before, these people uh, who have this type of, you know, attachment style, the avoidant, fearful attachment style, they tend to be the runners in relationships, just like the avoidant dismissives. And yeah, they can be commitment phobic. Because, and, and because of this, their relationships tend to be very short lived. And they'll rush into relationships and they'll rush out of relationships. And rebound relationships are not uncommon with these people because, you know, they're getting into another relationship to mask the pain of the breakup from the last relationship. So they might prefer to be in friends with benefits relationships or, you know, one of these people is like, well, why, why do we have to put a, a label on it? I, I don't like labels. We don't need labels. <laughs> um, yeah, there's like gray area in these relationships. They, they don't wanna be pinned down. They don't wanna be locked down to any kind of expectation. There's a fear of intimacy that prevents them from forming meaningful relationships. Everything's kind of surfacey, superficial. And they probably have self-esteem problems where there's a fear of abandonment. And they probably have self-esteem problems and fear of abandonment that disrupts relationships having any hope of growing and progressing. And sadly, these people are the source of a lot of pain for other people whom ideally they should have protected. The reality is that they do desire closeness, but they often lack discernment about who's safe and how to build and maintain trust. And often these people can cycle back and forth in and out of relationships, dating people who aren't safe and running away from those who are. Oftentimes someone with this attachment style will think and believe to themselves things like, there's something wrong with me. No one can love me. Or, right, they meet somebody who's safe, who they could grow with, but then they'll think to themselves, you're too good for me. You just end up hurting me anyway. On one hand, they, they think to themselves that they want to be close, but then it's hard for them to trust and to depend on another person. Wow. Speaking my language right there. Another thing they can think is, you know, that they are most comfortable without emotionally close relationships. So when they get into breakups, their first attempt is to kind of numb out feelings and to pretend they're fine. We kind of saw that with the avoidant dismissive that I discussed in the last video, okay? Just numb out the feelings, disassociate, pretend like everything's fine. But then later when the feelings resurface, and they always do, then their self-esteem gets lowered. And they, instead of working on the self-esteem issues, they seek solace in finding a new relationship as soon as possible. So like I said before, rebound relationships are very common for these people. It's a way that they mask or cope with pain from the last breakup, but they never get to the root problem, which is the self-esteem issues and the fear of abandonment. Advice or goals if, you know, you are dealing with this attachment style or, you know, like myself, I can relate to certain aspects of it, sadly, <laughs> you know. It's advice that's similar to the avoidant dismissive. Work on the self-esteem. Work on building and maintaining trust in your relationships. Work on the unresolved trauma. Try to untangle your instinct 
to protect yourself from feeling love and attachment and consider competency in providing safety and protection to others. Are you doing that? Are you partnering with other people who are doing that? How is that working out? Try to become more aware of your attachment style and consider interdependence versus counterdependence and acknowledge the impact that counterdependence has had on yourself and other people. Face your fear of losing yourself to others. Reconcile the idea that intimacy does not have to equal loss of independence. It could actually be an empowering thing. Realize your feelings, thoughts, needs, wants. Develop more of a strategy for managing emotions and communicating them clearly. Practice more eye contact and communications, right? Like this empathic way of being present when people are talking and acknowledging, I see you, I hear you, I feel you. And by the way, I talk more about this in a video series I put out on sacred sexuality where I talk about having that attachment gaze, that soul gazing. <laughs> so if you want to know more about that, I'll put the link for the video at the end. But I would say when these kind of people suffer a breakup, I'm usually, you know, I, I, I feel like what they probably need to do, again, on the advice, take a time out, spend some time alone, and address the issues that led to the ending of this relationship. Try to avoid, hard as it might be, avoid jumping into the next relationship before fixing the underlying problem, right? The underlying problem being this, where's this coming from? Why is there low self-worth, low self-esteem? Why is there fear of abandonment or commitment? And use the situation of this breakup to become more clear about what you want and need in your next relationship. I hope that's helped. And in the next video, which will be the final one in this series, we are going to talk about how to heal an insecure attachment style and become more secure in your attachments. I hope this has helped y'all and I'm looking forward to connecting with you again. Till next time, be blessed.